Hello, good evening to you and welcome to News 360. The bulletin comes to you live from the News Hub here at Adiso Ekanda. I'm Natalie Ford. My name is Alfred Okonse. Coming up tonight. News 360 Headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, GT Bank and Piccadilly Biscuits. The top stories this evening, bill to disband vigilantism laid before Parliament under certificates of urgency. Also tonight, the Ghana Education Service introduces new school uniform for junior high school students. Also ahead in the bulletin this evening, Accra Metropolitan Assembly helpless despite meteorological agencies' warnings of heavy rains this year. We're getting into the world of business tonight, where the National Premix Fuel Committee dismisses claims that the product currently being supplied is substandard. And on the international front this evening, Sudanese protesters demand civilian counsel to lead the transition rather than a military one. Stay with us here on News 360 for the details of these stories and much more news. As always, our listeners live on 3news.com and tv 3 Gun on Facebook. Our very first story this evening, the poor state of the Takra Takrade Road in the western region, which has sparked protest, was awarded on contract in March last year. However, there has not been any major work on the stretch. Our reporter Stanley Niblo has been following the development and comes through with the following report. Reports on the poor state of the Takra Takrade Road dates back to 2014. A two-kilometer untarred road linking the new government hospital to the Takwa Township was tarred after TV3 reported the ordeal patients go through to access health care. However, the main road is yet to be giving any attention. In September last year, some angry residents of the mineral-rich town led by the chiefs blocked the road in protest. This was after several petitions they say were presented to authorities did not produce any positive result. Respiratory tract infections are the second highest ailment contracted after malaria among residents. This was confirmed by the Taka Insuayim Municipal Health Promotions Officer Evans Waja. Top 10 diseases like upper respiratory tract infections was the number one disease that people normally go to the hospital with it. And because of the gramsci and then the dust in this municipality, so a lot of people normally contract disease. So we are always on air trying to educate them that they should always protect themselves. In March this year, TV3 again reported on the poor state of the road, but this time the deterioration had worsened. Areas badly affected include Banchim, Ahritiaso, Tamso and Ifuanta. Referrals to the Fianquanta Government Hospital in Takrade, the regional capital, are always not easy. As a result, road users rely on nose masks. The road is bad, and so we were happy when we heard the news that it would be fixed. However, nothing has been done. We are striving to endure the dust. Companies overwhelmed by the intensity of the dust deploy tankers to splash water on the road, but this has not been sustainable. In 2017, the road was awarded to a contractor for emergency repairs, but not much has been done. A Sabia construction firm which secured the contract has not been able to deliver after constructing culverts. The news team gathered funds have not been released by central government. 23rd March 2018, the contract was awarded, even though the contractor was there doing emergency work. But this time, uh, with a contract to do the job, but lack of funds. Municipal Chief Executive for Takwan Suyayim, Gilbert Kenneth Asma, blames the constant deterioration of the roads on activities of some mining companies in the area. The gold, is, it doesn't affect it very much because gold, they don't send the oil to the port. By this one, they, they hold the oil to the port. And look at the, 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 the size of the tracks and their bucket and everything. I mean, that is not helping the road. There are more than five mining companies in Takwa 
several unfulfilled promises by different governments to fix bad roads in the municipality sparked the recent protest. The protesters have given government a two-week ultimatum to release funds to reconstruct the road or incur their wrath. Oh, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly says it is not prepared for the rains, despite the Meteorological Agency's warnings of heavy rains this year. According to the director of the Drains Maintenance Unit, Graham Saba, drains to collect heavy volumes of water are yet to be realigned and redesigned due to financial constraints. So, Evelyn Tengma brings the details of the story. Four people, including a pregnant woman at Dansuman Flamingo, died in last Sunday's 40 to 45 minutes downpour in Accra. You can't remove the gutters because these gutters are very deep. So at first, anytime it rains, two or three days, they bring out people to come and dig out the gutters for the next raining season. But from some years now, it has been stopped. And when this place rains, nobody gets a, space, a, a place to pass. When it rains, it's more than a river. But when the gutter is not full, it passes through the gutters. But as soon as the gutter is full, it passes through the streets. This is the state of gutters here at Flamingo. This beautician tells me the whole area gets flooded any time it rains as a result of the choked drains. She says they have made efforts to clear the gutters off the field. I called the AMA office yesterday. So when after approaching them, then they'll give us people to do that. Some areas also got flooded on Sunday. <laughs> Residents of Adabraka Sahara claim the Odor drain has not been dredged for more than two years. This Odor River has not been drained, so when it rains small, it rains from the top. When it comes down, then it means flooded. Look at what has happened to our things, our relatives, with some of our motorbikes. Many things have spoiled in the Sunday rain that falls. So we are pleading to the government, we are pleading, we are pleading three times. They should try and come and drain the Odo River for us. When they drain this Odo River, I'm not sure we'll be into this trouble. But director of the Drains Maintenance Unit of the AMA, Graham Saba, says they are not ready for the rains. Accra is simply not ready for the rains. For a long time, we've been talking of realigning and redesigning our drains. Up to now, we've not been able to do that. If you are able to pray a line, redesign all the drains that we, are, we have in the city, then of course we can say that we are ready for any storm waters that come. He described the desilting of existing drains as window dressing, requesting huge investment in storm drains. Every year we go and then we desilt the existing drains. Meanwhile, the existing drains, the capacity itself cannot carry the storm water if it drains above a certain threshold. So that's the situation in which we are. Let us face facts and then find solutions to the problem. Then where the population is very tense, in areas where we have a lot of people, I would suggest that we even cover the drains there so that people don't put garbage into the drain. The sorting is very expensive, very, very expensive. And two years ago, if we visited the and this year we are doing it, I don't see anything so much. There was no dredging on Tuesday when the news team visited the Kwame Nkrumah Circle area. We are at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle here in Accra and this is the Odor drain. It is one of the major causes of flooding in Accra, especially this particular area. Now if you look into the drain you will see lots of plastic waste in it and we are told the whole of this year this particular drain has not been dredged and if you see lots of people live around the area and the metro department has already told us that they will be experiencing lots of rains and tender storm this year. You can see this building, somebody is just living close to the drain and you can imagine when it rains where this person will be placed. But this machine was at the same location on Thursday. But the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, says it is prepared for the rains. We don't know the volumes. We don't know what is likely to happen, so we preposition men for response. And so we have an urban search and rescue unit of men trained who are always ready to move to search and rescue to save lives of people.
who are affected distress during rainfall. And so when the forecast is received, this group of people are also trained. And I remember this year, because we received the forecast that the outlook was not going to be very good, we did this watermanship training at Dawenya and then to prepare our people for search and rescue operations. As the rains set in, one can only hope and pray lives are not lost and property destroyed as city authorities and other agencies appear helpless. Evelyn Tinkma, TV3 News, Accra. Certainly a worrying one there, but let's now turn to the educational sector as the Ghana Education Service has introduced a new uniform for junior high school students beginning next academic year. The move is to psychologically prepare them for the transition from primary to secondary. This was one of the highlights at the launch of the revised KG to primary six curriculum. Wendy Laie reports. Parents have to pay for the cost of the newly introduced school uniform for junior high school students. Already parents are paying for their uh, children's uniform. We have interventions, the supply of school uniforms. It is targeting children who, whose parents cannot afford. Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Professor Kwesi Opoku Amankwa, explained the rationale for the new uniform. Another area that we have found a need to also reform is the school uniforms for junior high schools. The idea is for them to start seeing themselves as they are in lower secondary school. This is also dovetailed into the new reforms that is coming in terms of their content, the content of their curriculum, which will, which will be upgraded such so that it will come to standards with the normal secondary school. Under the revised curriculum, the number of learning areas for the kindergarten pupils is to be reduced from seven to four. At lower and upper primary, the number of subjects remains the same. However, there will be fewer concepts and more in-depth treatment of concepts in each subject. There's also greater emphasis on literacy and numeracy. There will be national assessments at primary two, primary four, and primary six to ensure that pupils' performance are being tracked. It is expected that the teacher in the class, whatever the teacher is doing, class exercise or end of term exam, is also giving a test that is comparable to a national standard. And since this is not done, we have an education assessment unit which was supposed to do this. Now we're going to enforce it. History of Ghana will be compulsory for each pupil from primary one to primary six. Religious and moral education will be a standalone subject, just as physical education will be practical. French will be introduced in upper primary. We don't have enough French uh, teachers in the country. Even for the secondary schools, we don't have enough French teachers. It will still be school that can recruit French teachers, that can teach French. The colleges and the universities will be required to produce more French. The standards-based curriculum being introduced will ensure that at every stage, pupils demonstrate an understanding and mastery of knowledge and skills as they progress. So those are the changes that we are going to be seeing being made there. But let's now delve a little deeper into this revised curriculum, primary curriculum, and its key features put forward by the Ghana Education Service. Now, for KG and primary school, these are the subjects and pillars and the changes that we're going to be seeing put forward. For KG, as you heard earlier, it's going to be reduced from seven to four. Those are the learning areas, but they're going to be delved into a lot deeper and treated with some more depth. Numeracy, literacy, creative arts, and our world and our people is going to be a topic which is going to be treated at the KG level. And then moving forward to P1 to P3, which is primary one to primary three stage, they're going to, there's going to be numeracy, literacy, which involves English and Ghanaian language, science, creative arts, our world and our people, which would be in, treated with agriculture, computing, geography, and physical education, as well as RME, religious and moral education. And at this P1 to P3 stage, we'll be seeing computer being a part of our world and our people as a subject, as opposed to the P1 
4 to P6, primary 4 to primary 6, where computing would be taken as a subject on its own. There's going to be numeracy, literacy, which involves English and Ghanaian education, as well as French, which is going to be taken, and science, as well as creative arts, history, our world and our people, in this case, will be agriculture, citizenship, and geography. And computing in this category for P4 to P6 will be taken as its own as a single subject and physical education would also be treated as a subject on its own and so the whole point is so that these topics are delved into deeper in the various subjects and these are the changes and the revisions that we're seeing in this curriculum by the Ghana Education Service. Alfred? Yeah, a lot has happened. I mean, as a change of the Founders' Day, we have 16 regions now, abolishing of some holidays and, and all of that. So uh, see how all of that is inculcated into this new curriculum we have. But a bill to disband vigilantism has been laid before Parliament for consideration and approval under a certificate of urgency. Kamala Kloche reports the minority has, however, kicked against its urgent passage, calling for broader consultations. Stakeholders stormed Parliament in what can be described as efforts to make input into the Vigilantism and Related Offences Bill 2019. The Attorney General Gloria Ekufo presented before Parliament a new bill seeking to criminalize and disband all forms of political vigilantism in the country. AG is asking parliamentarians to under a certificate of urgency approve the Vigilantism and Related Offences Bill 2019. Leaked contents of the bill have named the Hawks, Invisible Forces, Delta Force, the Azoka Boys, Bamba Boys, Kandahar Boys, and the Borga Bulldogs as the known vigilante groups the bill seeks to disband. A supportive house on the bill, yet divisive on the approach to have the bill passed. The Commission of Enquiry report on ISO Wagon, as required by Article 280 of the Constitution, has not been published. I respect the Attorney General and her knowledge of constitutional law and its principles. I can understand the President is in a hurry to deal with it. We think that there must be multi stakeholder consultation. The scourge of vigilantism is bigger than the NDC and the NPP. It's a national problem. As leader of government business, I also have to show why government is committed to passing this bill under the table of emergency. And I know that on the 199, as you rightly directed, and also Article 106.13 of the Constitution, settle the matter. The issue of the commission of inquiry that was raised by the minority leader, Mr. Speaker, the minority leader espoused the argument of the bill not gazetted as stands the speaker, Professor Michael Quay shredded. We are masters of our own procedures. So says the Supreme Court. Anyone who is worried about the constitutionality thereof, we want to test it in the Supreme Court, mindful of the Supreme Court's own holding or the mastership that this honorable house has over its own procedures. The speaker, however, referred the bill. Meanwhile, the ranking member on the Legal and Constitutional Affairs Committee has raised doubts that the bill will receive the appropriate scrutiny. It's taken under a state of urgency. Immediately that decision is taken on the floor, you go immediately into second region. Okay, and then you would work on the bill to finish the bill by the close of sitting or latest tomorrow. Uh, but the nature of the bill and the, the matters that it is seeking to regulate, in my view, in my view, requires broader consultation. It cannot, it might be ineffective in dealing with vigilantism. We need the Peace Council. We need IDEC, which has been speaking on this matter. We need the police who have displayed on their walls that vigilantism is a threat to our democracy. We need to understand why, in their view, they think that vigilantism is a threat to democracy and why they have been unable to control vigilantism. If it's situation specific, they're talking about routing or an act which is not conducive to the peace of the nation. This is all like a broad, I mean, based law. But if it's situation specific that it is an illegality for anybody to raise vigilante groups, 
and the sentence for that is 10 years without an option to a fine, then the deterrence of that, I mean, I mean, a sanction regime is clear. No, we should take it under a certificate of agency because we can't afford to have these groups in our backyard. The nation should be rife for peace and we shouldn't have anything that would disturb the peace of this country. Well, you're still live here on News 360. We're live on TV3 Ghana, on Facebook, all across the world, on DSTV Channel 279 as well, and on 3news.com. Stay with us. We have more coming up. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the business news segment here on News 360. My name is Pa Kwesi Asari. In our very first story, Chairman of the National Premix Fuel Committee, Nilate Banaman, has assured fisher folk that the quality of premix fuel remains the same and falls within specifications. He was addressing a news conference in Accra. Government directed the Tema Oil Refinery Tour to change the color of premix fuel to check smuggling of the product. But the National Premix Fuel Secretariat has expressed concern over news circulating seeking to create the impression that the change in color from yellow to blue amounts to a reduction in the quality of the product. The National Premix Fuel Secretariat is well on course to delivering government's expectation of a robust, thriving fishery sector. Together with key stakeholders in the subsector, the leadership of the Secretary, that is the National Premier's Fuel Committee, is resolute and poised to continually ensure efficiency in the discharge of its mandate. The chairman of the committee assured fisher folks that the quality remains the same and falls within specifications. We wish to vehemently rebuff this ridiculous claim while putting the following facts out for the discerning public to see through the treacherous motive of the proponents of that false news story. First and foremost, the Tamoya Refinery is the only mandated body that blends premix fuel in the country. A relevant stakeholder such as the National Petroleum Authority, that's the NPA, have constantly ensured that the product is of the highest quality and subjects it to a series of quality assurance tests before it goes onto the market. He maintained the price remains highly subsidized and accessible, rendering claims that it is expensive, not just unfounded, but born out of ill will. All right, away from that, the insurance industry in Ghana is highly in favor of risk-based capital requirements as against a flat rate minimum capital requirement as consultations and deliberations are ongoing for a new minimum capital. Meanwhile, the National Insurance Commission has proposed a 50 million city minimum capital requirement by the end of 2020. The Chartered Insurance Institute of Ghana, as part of the stakeholder consultations and deliberations, organized a public lecture on the relevance of minimum capital requirement increases under effective risk-based supervision and corporate governance. A corporate governance and insurance expert, Emmanuel Baba Mahama, noted a flat rate minimum capital will be secondary should the insurance industry in Ghana adopt the risk-based capital requirement. In the light of this, the only way we can go now in Ghana, having started risk-based supervision, is for us to think about risk-based capital, which actually aligns a company's capital to its risk profile so that the individuality of their needs are addressed instead of one-size-fits-all capital, which we have been practicing over the past years. With the risk-based capital, there will be no need for an outsider to decide on the level of capital. Capital will be driven by the risk profile of the individual companies. So in view of this, if that is the direction, then there is no need to start uh, pronouncing on minimum capitals when you are going in a certain direction that makes minimum capital less important. So that is why I was suggesting at least a freeze 
so that we can have time to do the right thing, which would ultimately make this industry a very vibrant one. President of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Ghana, Reverend Asantema for Ahinkura, noted a risk-based capital regime will help protect indigenous insurance companies. The minimum capital requirement will not solve the problem. It can be raised to the moon and still we would have issues. And then to take away the unnecessary fights that result, the unnecessary requirements, the strain that is put on shareholders to raise capital when we can't find one. And it makes indigenous companies very nervous. The Deputy Commissioner of the National Insurance Commission, Michael Andor, acknowledged the need for a gatekeeping mechanism in the form of minimum capital alongside a risk-based capital regime. You also um, want to make sure that the companies have enough money to acquire the resources that they need to do what, what they are supposed to be doing. Plus, even within a risk-based environment, there's a, a floor below which nobody is, is allowed to go. Now, the Institute of Chartered Economists of Ghana, iSearch, is suggesting that the central bank establishes an indigenous forex trading platform to help stabilize the local currency. Chief Executive Officer of iSearch, Gideon Emisa, noted the platform will give the regulator the much-needed monitoring. Currently, Ghana's forex dealings are mostly conducted on the Reuters platform. Well, you cannot control something that you, you don't have much authority on. That is why there is a need for us to, to rethink and go around the table, sit and talk about how best we can have an indigenous you know, forex trading platform. Forex trading on the platforms require regulating the market. This is to ensure that licensed dealing operators do not go beyond a certain margin, though there is a demand on them to trade. Based on any demand that hits you as a licensed dealing operator, you are not supposed to go a certain margin, though the demand is on you, because uh, we're looking at the economy or the nation as, as, as large. As a licensed foreign exchange dealer, there is the need for you to be regulated. At the same, at the same time, we'll be able to check um, in terms of your margins or your pips, which you open the market or trade on the market, then that will be in our favor. CEO of the Institute of Chartered Economists of Ghana, Gideon Emisa, is suggesting that the regulator comes out with a local platform. And that's why we're calling on the policymakers to come in with that system where even during trading, you don't have to go beyond a certain margin as an economy. Once we have that and we have the inbuilt systems that will check your market opening position, at the same time will check your trading patterns. Routers provides trading reporting solution to the Bank of Ghana through both Thompson Routers Deal Tracker and Thomson Routers Trade Notification Services. Well, that's it for the very latest in business news. Thanks very much for watching. For more business news stories, you can log on to our website, 3news.com. My name is Parker Siasari. Over to you, Alfred. Thank you, Paco Silva Business. Now, President Kofuado has presented eight new all-purpose vehicles to the newly created Western North Region. He also outdoored the management staff of the new Regional Coordinating Council. It was during a campaign tour of the Bodhi constituency in the newly created Western North Region that the then presidential candidate for the new patriotic party, Ney Kofuado, in the 2016 general elections promised to create new regions and Ekufado had said he was convinced the creation of the new regions will engender development of hard to reach areas of the country addressing the debt of chiefs and people of Sefivioso, the capital of western north region on a two-day tour president Ekufado stated the creation of the six new regions is evidence he did not promise because he just wanted votes. He assured the necessary financial support will be given to the Western North region to enable it to execute its development agenda. As a show of commitment, the president presented eight new all purpose vehicles to the region whilst adoring the management staff for the coordinating council. Western North, anyone to take Western region, no. Mobile, 
Mi 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 na ye pe pe pe. Enfa o how ni kasa eni ya chimi makau ni se ibiema. We are all part of one united Ghana to be together as one people. Timisamu, peaceful coexistence, Western North and the original Western region. President Kofado said already some major roads in the new region have been earmarked for construction, some of which are under the Sino Hydro project. Omaine Osejiyoso Kedichi Kwesi Bomangama II thanked President Kofado for fulfilling his promise of a new region. He assured all the six paramounties will work in unity for the new region to succeed. Na be brain yin ni wa na so na na me ye hu se no kure o ye o sa de yo ampa o ka o ye ampa o ye be ma akukuduo fuo no kure a lot of people doubted the president when he promised to create new regions but we are overwhelmed with the way things have turned up enu mu so aka ho no kure na na o ye be ma akukuduo fuo President Ekufado earlier inspected work on a new campus for the Bibiani College of Health Sciences. The 2.9 million CD campus will have six lecture halls, demonstration and computer lab, other ancillary offices and will be completed in February 2020. He also made a stopover at the 30-acre rehabilitation cocoa farm at Intentreso at Sishri Bekwai, which is under the National Cocoa Rehabilitation Program. Well, on to the international front tonight, Sudanese protesters are demanding a civilian council lead the transition rather than a military one. Demonstrators are rallying against Sudan's Minister of Defense, Awad Mohammed Ahmed uh, Ibn Auf, who declared a two year military council to oversee a transition of power after a coup forced President Omar Al Bashir from office. who has governed Sudan since 1989 have been underway for several months. After nearly 30 years in power, Sudan's President Omar al-Bashir has been ousted and arrested. Speaking on state TV, Defense Minister Awad Ibn Auf said the army had decided to oversee a two-year transitional period followed by elections. He also said a three-month state of emergency was being put in place. The main group behind the demonstrations immediately rejected the military statement and urged people to remain at a sit-in outside army headquarters. Protesters want the civilian council to lead a transition rather than a military one. Mr. Bashir's exact whereabouts are not known. He said Sudan's constitution was being suspended, border crossings were being shut until further notice and airspace has been closed for 24 hours. Sudan's intelligence service said it was freeing all political prisoners. Mr. Bashiri is a subject of an international arrest warrant issued by the International Criminal Court, which accuses him of organizing war crimes and crimes against humanity in Sudan's western Darfur region. However, it is not clear what will happen to him following his arrest. So that's the development there in Sudan. Joining you on the phone line is a Sudanese refugee residing in Ghana, Ayub Gamaradin. Hello, Ayub, and thanks for your time this evening. Now, protests oh, have. Thank you for pro having me. Thank you, too. Protests have been underway for some several months, actually, against Mr. Bashir, who's been in power since 1989. And today, the military announces that he's been ousted and arrested. How are you, Sudanese people, and the Sudanese community responding to the news? Yeah, our response is. It was anointed that Omar Bashir has been arrested to intercept. Place, but we have not seen through the social media he has been arrested, and also we don't know exactly where he is right now, and we are not quite sure what our uh, our Ibn Wolf says as a def uh, defendant of a minister because he was seen by the president before, and we have not been on trust on him much. Still, we will continue to support the uh, protesters 
in Sudan who have been inside last three months ago up to now we will protest and we will good we will hear the good news through uh, international people or through their AU. So given the fact that the location of Mr. Bashir is currently unknown, what exactly are you looking forward to hearing at this stage? Because we are not quite sure exactly right now where he is, whether he's inside the Sudan or outside the Sudan. And if he's inside the Sudan, who has been arrested Umar al-Bashir? Mm. Because we have not, we are not trusting our Ahmed Ibn Wolf because he has been vice president before. He's a former vice president. We are not trusting him as he said he has been arrested Omar al-Bashir in safe place. And where the safe place has been located exactly, we want to know. Ayub Gamradin, thanks for your time this evening. That's a Sudanese refugee giving his response to the developments in Sudan. Stay with us here on News 360. You've got entertainment news coming up shortly. And entertainment tonight. She's the favorite of many gospel music lovers. With a career spanning over four decades, the sweet, sweet Jesus singer has inspired many of, the, of her people through her songs as well. Here's a throwback to the 80s and 90s when the works of gospel music exponent and pace setter, Reverend Dr. Mary Gansa, dominated. Music icon Reverend Dr. Mary Gansa is revered for her admirable contributions to the growth of gospel music. The acclaimed singer released her first song, God is Love, at age 15. Her debut album, Nyame Yodo, released in 1974, won the hearts of many music lovers. Songs on her second album, Onipa Bain, did not just propel Mary Gansa to stardom, it helped cement her place as a force to reckon with. <laughs> Mary Gansa boasts of mega hits like Sweet Sweet Jesus and Kechi and Nyame Yodo. The acclaimed vocalist is lauded for mentoring and inspiring many through her ministration. But after decades of active singing, the prolific composer stepped out of the limelight. Reverend Dr. Mary Ganta disagrees with assertions that she sank into oblivion. The role model revealed she took time off music to enroll in a school of theology as she believed her ministration must be Bible fact based. Aside updating herself, the singer also branched off to pastor a church. Mary Gansa, however, returned from her musical exile to her first love, music, celebrating her 40 years of singing and impacting lives in September 2018. The veteran musician is currently a member of Musica's National Election Committee, tasked to organize the union's June 26 elections. The gospel music scene looks saturated, but self-assured Reverend Gunter is positive on making a great impact, just like she did decades back. music then some more entertainment news the discourse on whether or not to use celebrities by political parties sway voters during elections has surfaced again multiple award-winning actor john DeMello is of the opinion that celebrities play a major role in helping political parties win elections john DeMello endorsed the ndc in 2016 and was seen on campaign platforms convincing electorates to vote for the party the former deputy general secretary of the ndc koku anido who recently disclosed that the party will limit 
limits the use of strangers and by extension celebrities in its 2020 campaign. Reacting to the comments, the actor John DeMello stressed no political party can do away with celebrities, noting that celebrities command a large following and to a large extent influence the outcome of elections. Mm. <laughs> Well, you know, you except for the fact that, I mean, in this country, we sometimes don't cherish research. Other than that, True. he it's should have been talking You mean based it's not based on, on some form some of facts? facts. That's, that's, okay, that's that this is the contribution True. that celebrities have made to, to elections over the, the election years. or the, the vote valid of the points. NDC that's whatsoever. So, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. on behalf of the rest of the team, we want to say thank you. My name is Alfred Akansi. And I'm Natalie Fort. There's a lot more news on our website. It's 3news.com. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely evening. Thank you.